It's been very, uh, very rewarding. So being the president of the organization, since historically we haven't had any staff, uh, most of the time we've had some contractors and some part-time help and that sort of things um, here and there. But uh, unlike all the other districts, it's all volunteer. And so this year it's been great because we're going to be able to hire an executive director for the first time this fall. But this whole time it's just been almost like a full-time job. You're yeah. part president, part executive director, helping manage everything. We've got an amazing team. Our committees have just been crushing it. Everyone's really stepped up. I'm so proud of the team that we have. And I've been chewing on a little bit of why that is. There was a another district a leader said how hard it was to find volunteers. I thought, like, why is that? And she started talking about it, and she said that she thinks that people just kind of know their worth. Someone who is a graphic designer, they make $35 an hour. They're not going to want to work for free. Yeah. And I'm just thinking with us, it's like I know the income I make, and I know the income that other people make on the board. Some people probably make in the thousands of dollars per hour if you if you – Break it down. Break it yeah. down. People that are business owners and real estate, whatever it is, they're doing very well. It's like an hour of their time is worth a lot. But these people are just crushing it. I'm just thinking, why is that? Uh, what, what makes us different from some, some other organizations? One, I think we're, we're catching the vision very well. And the vision isn't just let's do something for the community, um, but it's let's pass something on to the second generation. Mm -hmm. Let's share a piece of who we are so that we don't lose it, right? So uh, a few years ago, I was playing volleyball with a bunch of buddies. There's this tall six foot white American guy, blonde hair, blue eyes, comes up and we just have a conversation, hit it off. Uh, we become friends. And throughout the conversation, he asked, hey, what kind of Asian are you? It's like, well, I'm Vietnamese and my great grandfather was Chinese. so I'm part Chinese as well. And he said, that's awesome. I'm, I'm Japanese. I'm like, boy, you're not Japanese. I was looking at this guy. I'm looking at like, you're a comedian, him. dude. No, yeah. He's like, no, no, no. My grandmother was from Japan, and my grandfather met her in World War II. So I'm a fourth. I, I, just, I just looked at him like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, I can kind of see uh, some of the, the Japanese features. And I asked, uh, do you speak any Japanese? He's like, oh, no. Like, Have you been to Japan? Oh, no. Do you know anything about Japan? And he said... I like sushi. And I just thought, yeah, that doesn't really count. And I've seen The Last Samurai once. I saw The Last Samurai, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I realized in that moment, if I marry someone who's a Caucasian, my kids will be half, mm -hmm. my great -grand or my grandkids will be fourth. They're going to be walking around. They're going to be tall, which would be great. Um, but you're going to walk around, and people won't even know that they're Asian, right? But part of the, I, their identity will always be Asian, so if my generation isn't very intentional about passing on our culture, our heritage, values, these stories about our parents and grandparents, we're just going to lose it forever. And so I think that's one of the reasons why it, this resonates with a lot of Asian Americans is because we want to, it, it's very personal to us. We're wanting to pass on uh, the legacy of our families to, to the next generation. Yeah, it's not just, hey, we're going to do a great job but have an event. It's... When you, when, you, when you have that meaning behind it, then it's very easy to find volunteers. Yeah.